So let's finally imagine what it's like to work with another person on a Git repository. You have a colleague, you're both trying to commit changes, you're both pushing to say the main branch, and all of a sudden you end up working on the same file. You've introduced a merge conflict in the main branch on the authoritative repo. This is really bad. You want to avoid this at all costs. Here's how you do that with pull requests. Pull requests are a mechanism that is not native to Git but it is common to almost every Git hosting service. GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Git-T, Codeberg. I think those are the big ones. Pull requests are designed to create a submission process, a change management process, to propose merging changes from one branch into another. It could be main, it could be another. It basically works like this. A contributor makes a push to a remote branch other than the merge target, like main. The merge target can be main, like I said, but it doesn't have to be. The pull request is opened by the contributor, proposing that merge from their branch to wherever they want the changes to go. At this point, the hosting service like GitHub will do a couple of things. It will perform a pre-flight on the merge to see if there are any conflicts right away. It will also open a discussion thread so that the principals involved in change management can discuss whether this is a good idea, whether some extra work needs to be done, more commits, something like that. And maybe even launch any automated tasks to perform tests or pre-builds, whatever is necessary for that particular pipeline. Once the merge has been approved, which can either be a technical or automated process or a manual human one, the merge is committed to the target branch. You can then close the branch that the pull request came from or leave it open if more work is to be done there. Let's give it a shot. The first thing we're going to do is simulate a colleague here by creating a colleague branch. Git switch dash C colleague. And now let's make some new changes. Okay, we have new work on file one. We are now going to push this upstream and create a new branch at the same time. If we use git push dash u origin and give it a branch name that doesn't exist, the branch gets created. Helpfully, git even tells us that we can create a pull request by going to this link here. But let's reload the page and see what we see. GitHub tells us that colleague had recent pushes less than a minute ago. If you see, if you go to your repo page quickly after a push, this is what you'll see. But whenever you go to GitHub, you can click on pull requests and initiate one yourself. So you don't have to click this button. We can go to pull requests and new pull request. We're gonna do this manually. And this is the important point. We want to choose our base. This is what the merge target is going to be, so main. And compare is where the changes are coming from, in this case, colleague, this new branch that just appeared. So you can see that GitHub is doing a little pre-flight. It tells us, yes, it's able to merge. There's no problem here. And this is what the change looks like. So you have all these opportunities to have a discussion about it. Let's create the pull request. You can change the name, you can add some information about it. These are good ideas. You can add labels, lots of good project management opportunities here that we won't go into in this course, but I really encourage you to take advantage of what's here if you're a GitHub user. The pull request is now open. You're seeing that this pre-flight is happening once again. It says the branch has no conflicts with the base branch. Fantastic. We can go through any commits. We can see any files changed. And most importantly, there's a conversation. You can have a discussion thread about the change if necessary. And this is what I think is the most important point in a pull request. A process for deliberation in a large project that has a lot of constituents really matters. You want a record of the discussion and you want a record of the decision that was agreed upon by the people who are authorized to make those decisions. All right, everything looks good here. We're going to merge the pull request.
Ideally, you want somebody else to approve the merge rather than the person who's actually doing the PR. But in this case, we're simulating what's going on. At this point, we can delete the colleague branch if we're done with it. In this case, we are, so go ahead. Or as I said, you can leave it open if more work is going to come from that branch. Now we can, in our local, git switch back to main and run git pull. And sure enough, we have the change to file one that was introduced in colleague. If we look at the git log, it'll show our merge pull request right here. It'll even show the branch off in origin colleague and colleague because the commit exists in both places. I'm not going to make you sit here and listen to me drone on about PR best practices, but I really encourage you to read that section of the text. Those strategies around what branches to make, how to maintain them, how to do pull requests and automated processes are very, very important. But there is one other technique that I want to show you before we get out of here, and that's git tags. At some point during our work on the project, we will want to release it, or we will want to announce a version of the work. And that's where Git tags come into play. If we go back to our homepage for the repo, you'll see on the right-hand side, that there's an empty releases section here. We don't have any releases yet, but we're going to make one, and we're going to make one based on a tag. Tags are a way of indicating milestones at certain commits. This is a native feature of Git, and we're going to take advantage of it from the command line. Very simply, we're going to use git tag a for add, and then the version. Now, there are different version strategies, but I strongly encourage you to consider semantic versioning. Something like a major version, where we have breaking changes minor versions and patch versions. So in our case, it's pre-release, so 0.1.0. This is our initial release, so that's fine. And we'll even use a message here of initial release. If we want to see all of our tags, we can run git tag. Also, by default, the tag is going to be assigned to the head, but you can also give it another commit to be assigned to. That's usually not how we use it, though. We tend to use it at the head. We can then run git push origin 0 0.1.0. So it's a slightly different syntax for pushing tags, but it does work. You can see that that created a new tag remotely. And when I reload our repository here in GitHub, it does say now one tag. If I want to, then I can use that tag to create a release. If we click create a new release, choose tag. You can also create a tag right from here in the interface, but again, I want to show you how to do it with the command line. And we'll call this initial release, write some description about it. And you can even upload compiled binaries if that's appropriate for your project or any other additional materials that people will need. Publish this release or save it as a draft. And now we have a release right here that people can go visit. Now I will say that I tend to only add tags and releases from the main branch, but that's because I don't maintain a project with multiple parallel versions. Lots of projects do. So for example, if you're maintaining version 1.0 of an API and version 2.0 of an API, you may have reason to have different tags in different branches and create different releases based on those, depending on those branches. All right, that does it for pull requests and for unit three on collaboration. We're moving into the final unit of instruction here, and we're going to talk about publishing documentation, just like we did for this text, using GitHub and Honkit, which really was the whole point of all of this. So we'll see you in the next unit.